Good morning, everybody. Um, don't know if anyone is there yet, but we're here. We're ready. We're ready and waiting to, to go um, when we reach um, half past. So if you are just uh, gathering, you're very welcome. Um, do uh, pull up a chair, um, maybe have a cup of coffee in your hand or whatever, and, uh, and prepare to, to join us. And, uh, and we trust and believe uh, the Lord God himself uh, in our worship this morning. And uh, oh, we have the first person with us, Peter from Boscastle. Morning. Good morning, Peter. Lovely to have you with us. So, Philip, what do people need to get if they can? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say all that when we've actually hit hit half past so no one feels left out. Um, yes, thank you, Peter. Yes. Th so this is this is Peter, whose uh, brother and um, sister-in-law we know, David and Jackie ah. in Stretton on Foss. So um, Peter, uh, oh, and James is there as well. Um, can you just uh, just give us uh, and James from Bobbing good morning and Roger as well and Nicole all of the the huds in Stithians. Can you hear us? Okay, do just um, just tell us uh, just confirm that you can hear and see us. Okay, that would be that would be great. And Anne as well. Love to have you with us, Anne. And Wendy, Wendy's having her Cornish holiday in uh, in in Purley. <laughs> and uh, yesterday she and her husband were um, baking um, saffron bread in, oh, in, in Purley. Lovely. I cannot understand, you know, it's one of the mysteries of life. Why is saffron bread, saffron buns, saffron cake not more widely available across the country? People are so seriously missing out. Thank you, James. Yeah, we've got a good uh, sound check. We're all clear. John and Claire as well. Lovely to have you with us. And Dominic from over in Stoke Limsland and Callington, lovely to have you with us too. Um, I don't know whether you remember this actually, but I did. Uh, I did offer a little culinary tip. You may have heard this on um, uh, on Donna Birrell's show um, a few months back. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and my culinary trip uh, tip was saffron bread and butter pudding. And did you try it, Philip? I did try it, did, and you did, tried it did too. Did you try it? Yes, I did try it. Did you make it? I think I did, didn't I? No. Oh, didn't I? I did. <laughs> well, it was very good anyway. <laughs> it was absolutely delicious. So that, that there we are. This is my top tip before um, before we get going. Um, saff saffron uh, bread and butter, saffron bread and butter pudding. That's yes. The one. Saffron bread. No, and it was pudding. good. Excellent. Good. Morning, Roberts and Neil as well, and Caroline. Everyone, everyone turning up and and logging in. That's great. Great to have you with us. Oh, look, we've got some silly. Excellent, Fiona Silly from Silly. Excellent, Lovely. very good. Ooh. Oh yes, Wendy. Yes, you do that. Good, good idea. Good you, idea. You make it the saffron bread and butter pudding. You make exactly the same way as bread and butter pudding. Yeah. Just to confirm. Yeah, but it just, it just has a sort of a richness and a savour that uh, that you just don't. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of bread and butter pudding anyway, but this just takes it to a whole whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Etienne. <laughs> morning, Etienne from um, from uh, Lil Anton Carvis Bay. Great to have you with us, and 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 the other Van Blurts. I hope as well. Perhaps perhaps uh, looking in with you. Indeed, if you've if you've got other people um, in with you, um, why don't you? So, for instance, the Hud family. Let's see all of your names on the uh, on on the screen, so we can give a, a personal hello. Uh, to everybody. Heather and Robin in South Pethewind, lovely to have you with us. Excellent. And if there's anyone uh, anyone outside Cornwall who's uh, taking part this morning, um, let us know uh, as well. It'd be lovely to um, welcome you. Apart from, apart of course, from, um, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten their names. Um, I could have found out. The Williams. Oh, no, Wendy. Where, oh, yes. No, 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 not the Williams. No, because they're that's that's Peter, their brother. Yes, um, I know, but he was going to wake them up in Stratton on Falls. Oh, so they can join us. That's what he said. Oh, very good. Excellent. 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 Andrew's here with St. St. Devil, Andrew and Liz. Grant from Polpero. And lovely, Lee. Lovely Wendy that, and Lee, um, yes, they're in Purley. Lovely that there are so many Cornish people with us. That's what we're here for. Oh, I know. Of course it is. You know, Cornwall, Cornwall is a gift to, to, the, to the whole wide world. We don't want to keep keep our it keeps uh, on giving. Keep our treasures uh, exclusive to us. It's half past, Philip. It's half past. Excellent. Well done. Morning, Neil. Great to have you with us, Alexander and Rebecca, and Noah and Buddy the dog. Excellent. Okay. So welcome, welcome, welcome back 
um, if you have been with us before. But I also want to say a very big welcome to anyone who might be new here this morning, anyone who might not have uh, taken part in, in, in one of these. I think one of the things we are aware is happening uh, in these days is that people are joining us from further afield, people who perhaps wouldn't normally um, come to church. This is an opportunity just to sort of look in, as it were, take a peek and see what's uh, going on. And I want to say, if you're in that category, you are really, really welcome this morning. I hope you feel as much as part a part of this as everyone else who's uh, taking part in this, um, in, in this event um, today. So we've had lots of uh, hellos. We've got more. Lydia from Gummo's shop. Uh, the, and Etienne said the Lebanese make the best saffron cake. Okay, we 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 Hello leaving. from Samuel and Mummy. In St. Eve. Excellent. Yeah. Hi, Sarah and Shelley and Luxullian. Very good. Very good. Um, so now I said uh, I said before uh, when when we posted stuff online that you're going to need some things um, today. You're going to need some food that you can eat in slices. Now uh, we're going to have saffron bread. Saffron bread, that would be a very good idea. Uh, we're gonna have a look at what some of that food might be uh, in, in a few moments. Um, I also suggested, and it's not a disaster if you haven't got this, that you might like to make something um, like this in preparation for today. Um, so this is a card with four strings that are um, taped to the top. It's quite important that you have four. It, the four is important, absolutely. And we're going to use those. So right at the end of our time together today, we're going to be um, we're going to be coming back to this. As I say, if you've not got this with you, it's not a disaster. It is something you can do afterwards. But something else that will be really useful to have is a Bible, because we are going to do a little bit of Bible study uh, today. We're going to get I've got a big one. Ruth's got a bigger Bible <laughs> than I've got. Lucky girl. Uh, so we're going to be having. Actually, a that's mine. <laughs> we're going to be having a look at a, at a really important uh, passage of the Bible. Uh, for us all um, uh, today, and we're going to look at it in slices. Yeah, so last week our subject was making sense of what's happened, and we said that we can't really make sense of what's happened or what's happening at the moment unless we know that Jesus is at the heart of it all and is with us. And we also said that knowing that is the important thing, not the making sense. We might not be able to make sense of this for, for quite a while. This it's this being all this that we're going through, the current strange crisis. things. Yeah. But the important thing is that we know that Jesus is with us in the middle of it yeah. with us. Absolutely. And we took last week's story, if you remember, in chunks, and we had chocolate we at did. the beginning of each nice. chunk. And this week, as Philip has said, we're looking at it in slices. So what sliced food have you got ready to eat? So let us hear from you, um, see what you've got. And we're we're going on a bit of a, um, a health drive yes, today. Yes, I, I, <laughs> I, I do have to confess that uh, there is none of the chocolate left that we had in chunks. Uh, there was quite a bit left after the uh, the broadcast, but um, that's all gone, hasn't it? Has it has all gone, yes. um, So we're, we're being healthy today. So our... Um, our slices are slices of apple. I was actually thinking there are there are loads of different things. Do 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 tell us what you're eating in slices. Let's have some comments on the screen. Um, there are actually uh, loads and loads of foods that we eat in slices. Carrots. It's carrots. Cheese. Cake. Melon. Uh, cucumber. Bread. Meat. Yes, absolutely. Lots of things we eat to slices. Apple. Heather's got apple as well. Yes. Etienne's got some. Oh, Michelle, greetings from Misty Land's End. Lovely to, lovely to have you. Bananas. Yes, of course. Cheese, yes. but not holy cheese. No, some, some cheese is sliced better than others. Anyway, I'm glad you've got some, I'm glad you've got some food. And we are going to have to eat these uh, slices um, as, as we go through. Have a, take, take this thing in slices. So our subject last week was making sense of what's happened. And this is our subject for today. God's plan for his people. God's plan for his people. And we're going to have a look at the very first church. Look, all the, all the slices are coming in now. Hot cross buns, <laughs> oh, pizza. mango, pizza. Yes, of course, <laughs> cheese, crisps. <laughs> and Andrew has apple, just like, just like back, us. Back Thank to you the very point. Much. Yes, back to the point. Um, we're going to have a little look at the very first church that ever there was. And that church had a lot in common with us today 
because a lot of what they had to do, they had to do in their homes because they didn't have church buildings. So they were kind of, they weren't stuck at home, but they were at home and doing the business of being church uh, at home. So they had a lot in common. We have a lot in common uh, with them, though of course they didn't have Facebook uh, or the internet. And we're going to take uh, the story today in three slices. And in the first slice, we're going to ask, what did it mean then? What was the significance of what was going on then? And then in the second slice, we're going to ask, Great. what does it mean now? What does it mean now? What does this old story from the Bible mean for us today? And then in the third slice, I wonder if you can guess, guess this, we're going to ask, what will all of this mean in the future for us? I have a question. Yep. What's that about? Well, uh, there's that I okay. I was looking for clip art on <laughs> online, and I thought, well, there's you know the, the the question. It sort of points in three directions. It points backwards. It points here, and it points oh, okay. forwards. Okay. So now, then, then now, now, and future. in the future. Exactly. Okay. 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 So, but first of all, uh, let's hear the story itself. If you're sitting comfortably, then Ruth will begin. So this is the story from this rather large and quite heavy Bible, um, from Acts chapter 2, and we're going to start to read at verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Excellent. Oh. You're gonna just move your pages over. Sorry. So, uh, as we said earlier, we're going to look at this story in slices and we're going to ask, what did it mean then? And what does it mean now? And what might it mean in the future? So let's come to the first of those slices. What did it mean then? <laughs> this is quite complicated. You're doing very well. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, let's have a slice of whatever food that you have the uh, you, you've got apple. So have a slice of apple. Thank Whatever you, it is apple. that you're eating, slice by slice, have a slice now and enjoy it. Mm. Mm. That's sweet, this apple. Very mm. nice. Mm. We had this problem last week, didn't we? <laughs> really shouldn't do this with our mouths full. <laughs> so we're going to do. Excuse me. <laughs> We're going to do some some hard work in this slice. I'm, I just warned you that about that, but it will get easier, I promise you, and there will be more food. But in, in order to find out what this story meant then, we need to do a little bit of hard work so we find out what it has to say to us about what is God's plan for his people, God's big plan uh, for his people. So this is where you do need your Bibles if you've got them there. Open at Acts chapter 2, starting to read no. that. No, it's not. We're mm. going to look at the beginning of chapter 2 and um, tell us from that passage, let me just look over your shoulder here, what day was it that we were talking about? So when is it? What does the Bible say the day is? than we're was. looking at what was here. So what, what, are the answers? what day did all of this happen? That's what Ruth's trying to say. What day did all of this happen? Mm. That is indeed what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> we'll, let's, let's, there's, there's a single <laughs> word that we're looking for. Let's see who first comes up with it um, on the screen. What day did all of this happen? Because, chapter two, verse Because I don't one. think you can really understand the importance <laughs> of the passage that Ruth just read unless you know what day this happened. And so far, the last answer on the screen is bananas. It, wasn't the day it was bananas. not the day of bananas. 
it was the day of should we should we tell them uh no we're going to give them we're going to count down to 10 from we'll see whether anyone anyone comes up ah uh, oh, andrew turner well done it was the day of pentecost Hooray. thank you andrew very Hooray. very good so this was the day of pentecost when all this took yep. place and yep. there were we're going to be looking at three things that happened on that day so here's the next hard thing to look for verses two to four if you look at verses two to four of chapter two of Acts, what are the three things that happened? And the first one is in verses two to four. Okay, you're going to read it. I was just going to wait oh, for a few see. minutes, okay. seconds, and now I'm going to read it. So, verses two to four. What happened in this passage that's really important? Mm, yes, in this bit. Uh, so this is the day of Pentecost and they're all together. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So what happened? So what happened? Indeed, Alice in uh, Stythians, she said she came up with the word uh, Pentecost. Well done, Alice. Alice, do you want to have a go yourself and tell, it, tell us what happened on that day of Pentecost that we just heard about? God, God gave something really important. We've got some good answers coming in, but I want to see whether Alice or one of the other little huds in Stythians can come up with the answer for okay. us. Okay. We're only making it work harder for us. We are, we are, yeah. <laughs> but I know they know. I know they know. Just sometimes it takes time for it to come through the, uh, the ether. Come on, yes. Alice. Come on, Alice. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I'm sure Alice knows, really. It must have, when you read that passage, it must have been very strange. I think it was very strange because they were inside and there was the sound of a gust of wind. Gust of wind. It was blowing inside. You never, you never, you never have the wind blowing inside, do you? You've got to, and not less got the windows open. Alice, the Holy Spirit came, well done. And Lydia, we love your emojis as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. So the, what happened that day, the first thing that happened that day, the really important things that happened that, that day was that God gave the Holy Spirit to his church. And then something else happened. So you need to look now at verse uh, 14. Ruth will just read that for us. Verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Excellent. So Peter stood up to speak. I won't ask you to, to tell us the answer to that second question because it's just very obvious. The second important thing that happened was, <laughs> sorry, I'm just distracted by the messages. Uh, Sue Wilcox says the wind blows inside Delaval Church. I bet it does. Uh, anyway, the second really important thing that happened that day after the gift of the Holy Spirit was that Peter stood up to speak and he told everyone what God had done in sending Jesus to forgive us our sins and to enable us to be reconnected uh, to God. So that's the second thing. First thing, the Holy Spirit came. Second thing, Peter uh, explained ev to everyone what was going on and something else happened uh, as a result. And we have to go all the way on to verse 41. Would you like to read that for us, Ruth? Just verse 41? Just verse 41. Well, no, well, no, okay, 40 and 41. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Excellent. So that's the third big result of what happened on the day of Pentecost. First of all, God gave the Holy Spirit. Second, Peter stood up to preach. Thirdly, lots and lots of people, 3,000 people responded to Peter's message. And straight after that, we come to this little story that uh, we heard about um, earlier on, about what life in this brand new church was like. So Ruth's going to read it once more. Let's listen to it again. Bearing in mind what's happened straight after all of those three things have happened, this happens. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So remember how all of that started. It started because God gave the gift of his Holy Spirit to his people. And this is the kind of people, this is the kind of church that these people became because God gave the gift of his Holy Spirit and because they responded to Peter's message. And when God gets involved in the life of a group of people, this is supposed to be what happens. This is, in other words, God's plan for his people. Now, there's one particular part of God's plan for his people that we're going to look at now. These people devoted themselves to four things. They had four, four priorities. And we're going to remember what each one is. In fact, I'm going to teach you a way of remembering what those four things are. So, first of all, they gave themselves to the apostles' teaching. Is that like a Bible? That's like a Bible, exactly. Because if we want to find the apostles' teaching today, we find it in the pages of our Bibles, and particularly, of course, uh, in the New Testament. The apostles' teaching, the apostles were people who lived with Jesus, who knew him. And uh, so, if, these, if this little group of people wanted to know about Jesus, they needed to learn that. From the apostles. So the first thing they devoted themselves to was to learning about Jesus. And the second thing they devoted themselves to was the fellowship. Oh my goodness, how did you do that? Just turn your hands over like that. Okay. Okay. So they devoted themselves to the fellowship. They were really, really committed to being together. And then the third thing they devoted themselves to was the breaking of the bread. The breaking oh, of breaking. the bread. Okay. okay. In other words, at the heart of breaking bread was remembering that Jesus had died for them and knowing that Jesus lives for them. And then the fourth thing that they gave themselves to was the prayers. OK. And you got that from that passage. Yes. In Acts two. Yes, because that's what you read to us. Yes. They I'm devoted themselves to, to the apostles the teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers okay or, so, let's do it. so let's do it so okay. and you might like to join in okay so you don't start with this. no so they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching the fellowship the breaking of bread and the prayers they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching the fellowship the breaking of bread and the prayers it's quite difficult to do it is isn't it <laughs> Especially in quite a confined Especially space like this. Place. Let's see if we can do it a bit more let quickly. You, I'll let you do it so okay. you, can, you can show properly. Okay. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, so what did this story actually mean then? Okay. So it was meant to be that this was God's plan for his people. Yeah. 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 It meant that this was how they were supposed to live. They were supposed to do this and they were supposed to give themselves to these four things. And that's what that passage tells us. It tells us that they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching. Oh. The apostles teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. Exactly. And and you see, the point and was is... was that just the adults that did no, that? No, that's absolutely everybody. Absolutely everybody. Okay. Yes. And and you see, the, what, the point I'm trying to make here is that this is what church is supposed to be like. That's the thing I'm trying to say. That's why I want to say this is God's plan for his people. It isn't just that these people happened to behave like this. When God gives the gift of his Holy Spirit to his people, this, these are the kind of people they're supposed to become. These are the kind of things they're supposed to be devoted to, to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, 
and the press. Okay. So we said earlier that we're looking at this story in slices, didn't we? we so did. we're looking at what did it mean then? First slice. What does it mean now? Second slice. And what will it mean in the future? Third so, slice. not surprisingly, we're now coming to the second slice, which is what does it mean now? So what does that story mean now for us yeah. today? And so we get to have our second slice of food. Thank you very much. Enjoy your slice, whatever it may be, and wherever you are. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what does it mean now, Philip? <laughs> that is very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> it means this, and I'll carry on eating. The Apostles' teaching... Wait, wait, start again. The Apostles' teaching to fellowship, the breaking of bread, and to prayer mm. is what they did then. Mm -hmm. So now we're thinking about how does that mm -hmm. work now. Mm -hmm. Have you swallowed yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. It still means that. The apostles' teaching, yes. fellowship, breaking of bread, and yes. prayer. Okay. Yes. Now, there were three particular results from these people giving themselves to these four things. Three particular results from uh, giving them, keep on being distracted by the messages. There were three particular results from these people giving themselves to these four things. And I wonder if you can guess what they are. So we're looking here from verse 43 onwards and working all the way through to, to the end. So have a go yourselves. We're not gonna give you the answers to these. Can you think about three particular things that happened from verse 43 um, all the way through uh, to the end? And so while you do in, that- Still in Acts 2. While you do that, I'm just gonna read out one or two messages as well. Um, uh, Caroline says, could we eat in turn? So <laughs> I, might have, I might help things. We hadn't planned for that, Caroline, but we'll consider that. Uh, good morning, Valerie from Somerset. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, as well. So what are the what what are some of the things that happened? I'm looking for three particular things. Paul Wills, the, the, the mayor of St. Colum, he's with us as well. Uh, Morning, Paul. Three particular things. From verse 43. Verse 43 onwards in this passage. Okay. Just to the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. It's only a few verses, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep. Anybody got any ideas? There's one particular thing thing in verse 43. And then really in verse 44 um, onwards. And then particularly the end as well, I think it's really important. Something really important happens um, at, the, at the end. You might count up more than three things, but I have three particular things uh, in mind. And talk together in your homes. Oh, look at this. Neil. Mm. Neil says signs and wonders. Well, it, so, Neil's got more than one thing there, but we'll stick with the first one there. Signs and wonders. Lots, lots of things, lots of amazing things um, happened amongst them. Verse 43, it says many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Yeah. And then Kathy, Kathy Lang says sharing everything. I think that's another thing. This was an amazingly um, together church. There was an unusual togetherness and an unusual uh, generosity um, amongst uh, these these people that was uh, was really important, I think. So awesome things happened, as Esme is saying, an unusual togetherness and the generosity. And you're looking for one other thing. One other thing, particularly. Sarah's right, they stayed together. They were really committed to, to one another, to fellowship. One other thing that, that that's really important that uh, that's happened. Remember, 3,000 people joined this church, but was that, <coughs> excuse me, was that the end of the story. Look at verse 47, I suggest. Yes. They did indeed praise God, Valerie, you're absolutely right. So amazing things happened. There was an unusual togetherness and generosity. Lots of other good things as well, like praising God and eating together. Yeah, and selling possessions to give to those in need. It's all in verse 43 there. That we're, oh, no, not verse 43, verse 47, sorry. I said 47. 47. 
One particular thing in verse 47 that's really important. Yes, they shared their testimonies. It's it's even the second half of verse 47. It is. Does that help? Yep. Yay! They multiplied, <laughs> exactly. Andrew once again comes first with the first with the right arms, top of the class, Andrew Turner. More believed, says Esme. Exactly right. So that that's that was a really important consequence. So just 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 remember this. This is a really important part of God's plan for his people. Shows God's plan for his people. Okay, so because these people give themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship the breaking of bread and the prayers, amazing things happen. There's a really unusual togetherness amongst them. And day by day, the Lord adds to their number those who are being saved because they gave themselves to those four things. Amazing things happened. There's an unusual togetherness and generosity amongst them and people join them. You turn the page over, please, Ruth. Thank you very much. So here's the thing. It was like that for the early church. And we can see that God's plan for his people hasn't changed at all, has it? It's no. still his plan that we should give ourselves to the teaching of the teaching, teaching. <laughs> fellowship. The breaking of bread and to prayer. And, and remember, that's for everybody in God's family, not just for adults and not just for um, really important people like church wardens. So the question is, what does it mean for us now? And, and, the, and, the, and answer the answer is, is it means exactly the same. the same now as it did then. So, and so amazing things should still happen. Mm -hmm. And there should be an unusual togetherness and generosity in our church life, in our, our church families. Yep. And, and that God should be drawing other people into those families, the church families. So whether you're in a big family of your own or whether you're on your own, you're part of God's family. And together we should be doing these things. Can just hold on a sec. Michelle Brown says she's lost audio. If other people have lost audio, could you let us know, please? Just see whether, just let us know whether you can still hear us or not, because we don't want to just be forcing you to lip read. If it's not working, we can just, I think, unplug the uh, the mics. We bought these. Um, we bought these nice little mics to make all this uh, a little bit easier for us. Can anybody hear us? It's okay. Thank you, Kathy. Very good. OK, I'm Maybe. sorry. I think it may be just your end, Michelle. I'm sorry about that. Okay, Perhaps good. it's a bad, bad in the, down in Senon. So what we were saying was yes. that was that um, these things should still be happening today in our church families, shouldn't they? Yes. People should be drawn to our churches because of this unusual togetherness and generosity that we show to the people around us. So here's the question. Here's the question. How have you seen these things happening over the last few weeks? OK, how have you seen these things happening over the last few weeks? We do live in strange times, but then this early church uh, heard um, was living through strange times as well. So how have you seen any of these three things happening over recent days? Amazing things happening, people being drawn close together and the Lord adding to um, the membership of his uh, church. Now, you might want to have a little conversation at home about that. If you're in a family, you might like to have a little conversation about that. Have you seen any of those three things happening uh, over these last uh, few days? Or if you rather, you can join us here in having a little bit um, of a conversation um, about that. So, Ruth. Thinking about these three things, amazing things happening, an unusual togetherness, and uh, people, the Lord adding to the number, the members of his church. Have you seen any of those three things happening? Can you think of some ways in which those, we might have seen those things happening? Well, I think unusual togetherness is exactly what we're experiencing now, isn't it? Because even, even in, when we do this. Because in some ways we're apart, but in other ways, I think we're more together 
as communities, and I don't, I don't just mean church communities, but as communities than, than we have been before. You know, yeah. people are making much more of an effort to reach out to the people around them um, than normally would be the case. And I, and I have to say that's happened for me. I'm starting a little volunteering thing today that I would probably never have got involved in within the community mm. if it hadn't been for this crisis. So that's unusual togetherness. Mm. What about you? Uh, I, I was just going to read some of the things up here, actually. Uh, Neil um, talks about uh, reaching out to neighbours and sharing with them. There's been an awful lot of uh, that going on and congregations working hard to remain in touch by phone and social media. And I think Wendy's point is really important. And that's that's actually why I made my little welcome at the beginning to people who might not normally um, come to church and who may well not be writing things in the in the chat column. But I think there are a lot of people who are joining us virtually who would never come through um, the doors of a church building. And I want to say to you, you're really, really welcome. And it's great to have you uh, have you here. Uh, there's, a, there's an amazing thing, absolutely. Captain Tom's small hope of 1,000 pounds becoming 30 million. That is an amazing thing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing thing. More volunteering um, going on. Uh, and Paul says, never have the words love thy neighbor as you would yourself been so appropriate during this crisis. People have been so kind to each other, uh, helping um, one another. It's not easy for everybody, though, is it? No, I mean, Peter says, don't forget those who are not coping. That's absolutely right, Peter. It's not all it's not all plain sailing. It's not all all sunshine. Uh, these things are happening, I think, against a, you know, a dark and a difficult um Back, backdrop for uh, for many people, which in many ways I think is what makes it it, it it more impressive. Esme says people are taking risks with their resources to protect others, pushing past the barriers of what if in compassion, taking risks, absolutely. More family time, yes. Um, Claire says, and Claire is a, um, it, it works in chaplaincy, amazing things are happening. We've had a huge response to our plea for remote virtual pastoral visitors for our end of life uh, patients. Mm. That's very good. Children, Rebecca says, absolutely, this is really good, I think. Children have been amazing at coping and wanting to uh, to help uh, to help others. So I think, I think we can say that something of this has been seen um, in, in, in our day. And I think that's, uh, that's really important. And what this story means is that God's plan for his people. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Has not changed. <laughs> Sorry. He still wants us to be committed to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. And he still wants to see amazing things happen amongst us. He still wants there to be an amazing togetherness between us. And he still wants other people to be drawn into his family. So, so we're looking in slices. What did it mean then? What does it mean now? And now we come to our third slice because we need to think through what this will mean going forward from now. So if you could have your third slice, what I thank you. I'll, I'm going to take the hint from earlier on. I'm going to keep talking and have my slice when you're talking next. Okay, so I'll eat mine yep. because you can yep. talk yep. now. So, just to repeat, and forgive me if this is getting repetitious, God's plan for his people has not changed. He still wants us to be committed to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. And he still wants to see amazing things happen amongst us, there to be an unusual togetherness between us, and for other people to be drawn into his family. What are, so, we, what are we supposed to do, then? What are we supposed to do? Not eat with our mouth full. No. <laughs> I think we need to do two things. We need to be committed to those four things, and I won't run through them again. And we need to pray. We need to pray. That's one of the four things, of course. We need to pray for amazing things to happen amongst us, for there to be an unusual togetherness between us, and for other people to be drawn into God's family. So we're going to do those two things now. We're going to do something as a sign of our commitment to those four things in a moment. But first of all, we're going to pray. So I would like you please to share your prayers on the screen that these three things might happen amongst us. And of course, one of the amazing things we want to see happen is for this virus to be tackled and, and dealt with 
and indeed for people to um, uh, to be healed, uh, and indeed for people to find uh, to find hope. Those people who Peter mentioned earlier who, who are not um, who are not coping. And actually, while you write up your uh, your prayers on the the screen, um, and please do that in the chat. Um, let me share one piece of good news. We've been praying over the last few weeks for a man called Michael, who's been in in intensive care in Trelisk. And I received an email this morning from his sister who lives in France, who says that he is no longer in ITU. He's on Phoenix Ward, which she said she thought was a very, uh, very appropriate name. He's not out of the woods yet. Uh, he, he's got a long way to go. Um, but they are more hopeful of the future uh, than they were before. And that's, you know, of course, because of the wonderful medical care that he's been receiving at Trillisk, but it's also because, uh, because people have been praying. Um, so let me start our prayers by, uh, by praying for Michael and for anyone else who is um, uh, in, in, in Trillisk or in the other hospitals or perhaps uh, suffering from this at home. Lord, we do want to pray for health, and healing and recovery um, for those who are ill. Um, we recognize the sadness that many people have faced through losing loved ones, but Lord, we want that number to go on declining and for more and more people to, to recover and find, find health. We want to pray particularly for Michael that you'll restore him to, to good health and to wholeness. And, the, and as we name Michael uh, before you, we all bring before you all those many other people whose names we don't know and pray for their healing too. Let's uh, let's carry on praying Ruth would you like up some of these that are on the screen. Yeah. And Lord we do pray for uh, people who may not be physically ill but for people who are struggling with their mental or emotional health and finding this time of isolation really challenging and we pray particularly for people who may be on their own in isolation we pray for people who are living with people that they don't get on with and don't like very much or who don't like them. And we do pray that um, uh, you would be with those people and be comforting them and um, show them how they can reach out yeah. to others. Yeah, we do pray for all of that, Lord. We pray, for, uh, we pray that that generosity that we've seen will continue uh, and that we will continue to be open hearted and open um, and, and generous minded in the way that we deal with the, the gifts that we've been given, that you've given to us. We pray with Alice for a friend, Gigi, who has no internet and so is isolated. That must be really hard. Lord, we pray for her and for her family and, and anyone who's isolated with no family or community support, for children who are finding it hard to be. Uh, at home um, and not have the opportunity to get out and play and be with their friends. Uh, pray for them, Lord. Um, Lucy prays for family that will all remain happy and have fun. Pray for all of that for families at home um, together. Uh, people who do find this really hard to understand and just overwhelmed by the news of, of death on the, uh, on, on the, t on, on the uh, television. And Lord, looking forward uh, into um, when this is over, we pray that our behaviour will still continue, that this shouldn't be a temporary thing, but that our reaching out to others and sharing with others and being generous to others should continue. And that people who see Christians behaving like this will be drawn to you and drawn into our um, church families as a result. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we do pray um, that you will help us to be committed to these things. And we do pray, Lord, that through us and, and beyond us, we will see in the future amazing things happen, that there will be a, an unusual together, togetherness amongst us that, that speaks of the love that you give us uh, and that you will, Lord, go on adding to, to our number, the people who you are, drawing to yourself and, uh, and and making your own. Lord, we pray, build your church through this, not for our sake, Lord, but for your sake and for the sake of this world that you love. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen.
So, Philip, could you just summarise then what it will mean for the future? <laughs> well, I think I just just really what I what I said in the prayers that uh, I think this is this is God's enduring plan for His people that we should give ourselves to these four things so that amazing things might happen amongst us, uh, so that we might be unusually close and together, and so that other people may come. Uh, to to join us, but that that first step of being committed to those four things, I think, is um, is really important. What, what what were those four things again? <sighs> the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. But my point is, you can't, I think, go through life doing that the whole time. Well, how are we going to remember them? Though? Well, I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> so this is where we come to our piece of card. With these um, with these four strings uh, on them. Now I'm, I have practiced this beforehand, doing it this way around. And but I'm going to stand up. Shall I hold it? Yeah. Can you hold it for me? That's brilliant, darling. Thank you. No, just okay. So, what we're going to do? I'm going to show you how to make a wristband um, out of these um, four strands. And it is important to have the four to remember. The four strands. Thing. So the four strands they represent the four things. That we have to be committed to so to the apostles teaching to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers so what i'm going to suggest we do is that we make these wristbands and we won't have time to do the whole wristband uh, here live now but we make these wristbands and then we wear them as a sign of our commitment to these four things and i can promise you that i'm going to do this and i will post a picture online of me wearing the wristband as a sign of our commitment to these four things. Now I posted I'm, I'm a video. I'm going to do it too. You're going to do it too. Yeah. I, I posted a video um, online showing you how to do it, but uh, you might also, when this recording goes up online, like to uh, have a look and you can just be reminded through this recording of, of how to do it. But I'm going to tell you now. So if you've got one of these with you, you might like to get it in front of you and to do this with me now. I know you can't see my face, but you can hear my voice. So. What you do is you take the strand that is on the left and you put it over the one next to it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you pinch those other two together. The middle two. The middle two. Mm -hmm. And move the one that is on the right-hand side over both of them. Mm -hmm. And then you keep on doing that. So you take so the one that's on the left, you move it over that's the single over one. one that's next to it. Pinch the two, Pinch in, the the two in the middle together. Move the one on the right over them. Yeah. Just going to keep doing this for a couple more goes. And you can kind of make it uh, tighter or loose according to your... According to your taste. Taste. <laughs> it's nice to get it quite tight, I think. Just do like that. Yeah, I can see. Can we show it's coming? Look. Can you see that? There we are. You can just begin to see there's a little bit of um, shape coming. Right. So that's how you do a four-strand plait. And then you, well, everybody knows how to make friendship bracelets, don't they? Much well, I, I, never, do. I never did. No. But anyway, and so on and so forth. So that's how you can do it. it. So as I say, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And I will post a picture of me wearing the four-strand wristband. And we can all have a go at doing that. And so it really uh, helps to have different colours, doesn't it? Because then you can yeah, it's much easier to follow it. Remember each thing. To f uh, you can remember each thing, and it's also much easier to make the wristband because then you don't get confused about which one's which. Did you find it easy to learn how to do that, Philip? I, I did. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yes, I did. <laughs> Had, well, it wasn't something I'd done before, but I managed to learn how to do it. I think it's time that we uh, we come to a close. Uh, we've been on here for nearly fifty minutes. Gosh, the time has flown. It's been lovely to have you join us. Uh, once again, I want to say if you've been just peeking and seeing what's going on, you're really, really welcome. Uh, if you'd like to be in touch with us, just leave us a message on the Truro Diocese uh, Facebook page, or you can contact us uh, through our info email address. That's info at truro.anglican.org. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, um, but you don't have to, of course, if you just want to keep observing. Uh, that's that's absolutely fine. But please know that you've been very welcome, as have you all been. And thank you for all of your uh, contributions uh, to us today, to us all. 
So I'm going to close with a, with a prayer of, uh, of blessing uh, for us all. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So goodbye, everybody. It's been great to have you with us. Uh, you might just like to keep sending some uh, some goodbye messages. Oh, gosh, we've got lots more coming in. Be nice to see any of the uh, of the the four stranded plats. Yes, absolutely. So we you could post uh, you could post them online as well. Esme says, "How long did I practice? Longer than you might think." Yes, Esme. That's, that's why I asked him that question. <laughs> okay, bless you all. It's lovely to be uh, lovely to have you with us. And as Robert says, time for after service coffee and fellowship. Enjoy that, whatever form that may take for you. Bye bye, and bye -bye. God bless. Bye, bye everybody. Bye bye.